Good morning, this is Margaret Petty from the University of Sewing and we're here at Facebook Live. Today is Saturday and we have lots of fun things for you guys. So I wanna start off with first a great wish for you to have a wonderful Valentine's Day. If nobody else is gonna say it to you, I wanna make sure you know here at the University of Sewing we think that you need a wonderful, happy Valentine's Day said to you. So um, don't forget to share and like us on Facebook. You know we're also on YouTube, so if you go on there, there's always new videos being added, so you might wanna try that out sometime too. Today's giveaway, when you share, is two patterns. Because it's Valentine's Day coming up, I wanted to give you guys something special. So there's this adorable pattern for the, um, you know, it's snowmen. But it's not just Christmas, so it's more of a wintertime theme. And this is really cute because this is this applique pattern. And the pattern, it has a gift bag, a pillow cover. It has, a um, let's see, a jar wraps, an apron. And they're all in here along with the applique pattern. So that's pretty cool. And this adorable pattern is for the cat lovers and all of us. I mean, how can you not love this? This is so cute. Um, I would, I'm sure you could actually do better colors on this. Uh, sometimes I wonder about these pattern makers and why they don't pick prettier colors, but it's a wonderful uh, log cabin pattern with some cats in it. And both of these can be yours if you share and your name gets picked out of the hat. And don't worry, it doesn't matter if you can't watch this when we're doing it live. That's nice if you can. Brenda Mills, Nancy Stalker, both have shared. <laughs> Thank you guys, that's wonderful. So I just wanted you to know that it doesn't matter if you come back later and watch it and share it then, people still will get to see it and maybe more people will get to know about the University of Sewing and we can do things like what we did today. A lovely woman um, in Alabama. Alabama is getting sent a wonderful Bernina hoop. So you guys, when you watch, when we, we share this with people, everyone gets to know about all the things that we have to offer. And I think we have some unique things that we have for people. And I'd really love to be able to have them know about us too. And as we grow, you guys help do that, and we really do appreciate it. Okay, so we've got some things here on the table, and you're probably curious about what's going on here. Well, I told you today I am gonna show you how to do a shoulder adjustment. Now, one of the big things um, in making clothes is how do they fit you? And we're not going to I mean, there's a million things we could talk about shoulders. We're just gonna do something very succinct here today because we only have 25 minutes to tell you everything. So I'm gonna cover the shoulder adjustment and I'll explain that in a second here. And we're gonna cover some new fabrics that came in. But I want you to know about, um, that we are gonna get to the fabrics they are sitting over here. I want you to see some of the tools I'm using um, for starters, you will need a measuring tape because what you're going to do is you are going to measure from the base of your neck. And usually we have like a little crease right there. I mean, unless you're, you know, 20 and you're probably not watching this. <laughs> so we have a little crease right there. And then when you lift up your arm, you will see a little area that your arm divots into. And you can put your finger there and you can feel where the joint of your shoulder is. So you want to measure that distance. For me, it turns out it's four and a quarter inches. And typical pattern companies, what they do is they make that measurement standard at four and a half. Now, if you're basing a shoulder seam on someone who's got a four and a half inch width shoulder and yours is only four and a quarter, that's a little bit of a problem. And the reason it's a problem is because what it does is it drops the shoulder line for you. And so that means, as in this little top I'm wearing right now, that instead of being at my shoulder point, it's below it. So I want you to just take a look with me, just folding the fabric up a little bit and putting my shoulder right where it's supposed to be. 
I have more arm movement. It doesn't move my shirt around as much and it looks prettier. It gives you a better line. And so if you're going to make some clothes for yourself, even if you're not going to do anything really complicated, you might want to make sure that shoulder line is where it's supposed to be. It makes us look like we have better posture. It makes us look neater and nicer. And look what happens when I take and let that go and see all that movement here in my shoulder. So what happens for me on almost every garment I wear is the shoulders in the wrong spot. Now, sometimes I will think that the that particular garment is worthwhile in me doing the alterations and fixing it. But sometimes I don't. As you can see, I'm wearing a shirt that I didn't do that with. But a lot of them I do do this for. So I'm going to show you a typical blouse pattern. This is a really cute one. This is a simplicity pattern. And notice it's got either front darts or you don't have to add them. It's got three different lengths of sleeve. You've got a short sleeve, a three-quarter, or a full-length sleeve. So these it has a lot of options. It's got this cute little tie if you like that sort of thing, or it doesn't. So you've got a lot of options with a pattern like this and... This pattern in particular is really nice because it comes in four different cup sizes. It does an A cup, a B cup, a C cup, and a D cup. And for those of us who have, you know, we're not a B cup, then a pattern like this is really helpful. Now, I'm going to show you how to adjust the pattern on this one, and then I'm going to tell you what to look for if you... Now, you may have wider shoulders, you may have narrower shoulders than the typical four and a half inches that the pattern company is looking at. So what I do when I look at a pattern, the first thing I do is the original pattern, it looks like this. And hopefully Dave can get a good picture of that. Notice that I'm picking the D cup they don't have a double D cup, which is what I actually am. That's okay. We'll just go with the D cup. That's close enough. Then I looked at the pattern measurements. And this, on the pattern piece, if you see measurements, those are actual numbers. They are not your, um, your measurements of... When you look at, a, this is really, I could get into discussing this for hours with you guys, but basically when you look at a pattern, what the pattern does is they give you body measurements, and this one doesn't do it that way. This one was a little confusing in that regard. Usually what they do is they give you body measurements, and they give you a bust number, and they give you a waist number, and a hip number, and my numbers never match any of this. But they come close in certain areas. So if you're looking at this and you go, okay, well, this says, I'm going to just tell you, I would probably go in between an 18 and a six, 16 and an 18. So my measurements, my full bust measurement, and that's what they're talking about here is a full bust measurement. So if I go ahead and make either a 16 or an 18, and remember this has nothing to do with ready to wear sizes, nothing. These are just numbers. So I fit between a 16 and an 18. So I looked at the patterns and this pattern isn't made that way. This pattern has an A, B, C, D, E, or E, and F. So what I did was I looked at their numbers. Well, it turns out the C is closest to my actual full bust measurement which is a 39 and a half. So I'm gonna use the C on this particular pattern. Now, if you've got a pattern and you're not sure how to measure for yourself, you're not sure which size you're supposed to measure, just remember, it's, I'm, I am going to be releasing a video series and we're gonna talk about measuring ourselves. And we'll talk about these kind of things. And I've got it all ready. I've got all the videos done. And the only thing I have to do is figure out when we can actually do it. And if you're interested in that, 
let me know because what I'm going to do is I'm going to release this and it's going to have Zoom. Um, it's going to be virtual so we can talk to each other wherever we're at at home. And what we're going to do is we're going to show some video. We're going to talk about those measurements. Then we're going to come back for multiple. It's, it can't be done all at one time. But we're going to do this. And what we'll be able to do is I'll help you figure out what is your shoulder measurement, what is your measurements, and what pattern size you should use. And so what I've done for today is I traced out the C version of this. And it doesn't matter if you have been able to use a pattern and you've been happy with it, except for you haven't been happy about the shoulders or you want to make that look a little bit neater, trace your pattern. And so this way, if it doesn't work, you're not out anything. So I've traced the pattern. It is ready to go. And I just noticed I must have torn it a little bit up at the top. I'm kind of an OCD about these silly things. So what I've done here is this is my cut edge. This is my center front. I put my grain line on. I put in the dart. And the only thing now I need to check is what's the story with the shoulders. And so what I'm going to show you right now is this pattern is like every pattern. It's got 5 8 inch seam allowances. So I'm going to mark my seam allowances. So the first one I'm going to do is my seam allowance across here. I have to know where my seam allowances are at because you don't want to measure up here because that's not accurate. That's not where the seam line is. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mark that seam allowance and this seam allowance. What we did is measure from the cut edge in 5 8 inches, measure in from the cut edge 5 8 inches. And now I'm just going to measure that to see what the shoulder is measuring. And when I measure that, this shoulder is measuring 4 and 3 quarters. Now I told you my actual measurement is 4 and a quarter. And if they are using the standard idea that the shoulder should be four or four and a half inches they've obviously added a quarter inch ease in here because when you subtract four and a half from four and three quarters that's where i get that number from now i'm going to make this shoulder smaller by a quarter of an inch so i keep the what they intended was a quarter inch of ease and i'm also going to make a mock-up to make sure i'm happy with this the only thing I have to do to change this shoulder line is I'm going to draw a straight line. I'm going to do it at perpendicular from my shoulder seam. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make another line. Okay. So these are actually cut lines. And so... We're going to use the Fancy Dancy Rotary Cutter here. This is my paper rotary cutter. So I'm going to just cut all that extra paper away so that this is very obvious. So here's my armhole. Here's my shoulder line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this straight line and I'm going to cut down to... Let me see, I'm gonna do a different color so you guys can really see it. See that dot right there? That's the intersection of those two lines. I'm gonna to cut to right here. And I'm gonna to cut to right there. And then I'm gonna overlap my shoulder here by a quarter of an inch. And how I can do that accurately is all I have to do is measure over here one quarter of an inch and put a little mark. And there we go. I'm going to move this. I've left a hinge right here. And I'm going to move this over. 
And now I've made my shoulder a quarter of an inch smaller so that for me, it fits well. Now notice what's happened here is I have a little gap right here. This particular alteration we have to do on the back piece as well as on the front. The shoulders have to match. And so what you can do is with your extra paper, you can put this under here. See, I have that extra paper. I always reuse stuff like this. I can go ahead now and I can straighten that out. And then I can make sure that this is straight. There's a little tiny bit of an uptick there. There we go. And we'll do the exact same thing on the back, and that is a simple way to correct that shoulder. You can go the opposite way. You can make the shoulder bigger. So what you can do is if you're making the shoulder bigger, and I'm using vellum right now, so that makes it really easy for me to move my tape. And we carry some vellum. It's a little bit pricey. If it turns out you have wider shoulders, look here. So what we can do is just move it out. Say we have our shoulders are a quarter of an inch wider than four and a half. We can just measure out a quarter of an inch and we'll do the opposite over here. We'll move that out a quarter of an inch We'll put a piece of paper under here this way. And then you have it moved out. So if you have wider shoulders, here's a correction for it. Okay, so that is the simple fix for your shoulders. Now, as I said, if you're not used to measuring yourself, if you're not used to doing all of this, I want you to know we have a class coming up on measuring ourselves. It's gonna be very inexpensive. It's gonna run probably three sessions and we're gonna do it as a Zoom and you get to watch some videos and then you can come back and ask lots of questions and we can see what other people are struggling with. Hopefully if you're struggling, you'll see someone else or maybe you'll even be the person who's asking that question and then you can find out how you're going to make some adjustments to your patterns. Um, but we've got to start off with measuring. We have to have that accuracy first. Um, today what we used were friction markers. We carry these. Um, they are on our website, but you just have to let us know what color you want. They come in a wide variety of colors. There's pink and purple and green. What's really cool about friction markers is that you hit them with an iron and they go away. Um, on some fabrics, they will leave a white line but generally um, this washes out and it's not a problem, but you probably, as with all marking tools, you wanna check and make sure that it's not gonna leave a mark on the things you want. I don't believe our vellum is on, on the website. What I can tell you is um, this is a little bit pricey. For traditional tracing paper, Dick Blick has it and it's really good prices. I would actually recommend just getting a big roll of regular tracing paper from them. Um, I use it all the time and I just think that you'll find that rather easy to use. Um, and it's a little bit more see-through. This vellum is not as see-through as what I'd like. It works really good for this demonstration for you guys to see everything, but I don't like it as much as I do regular tracing paper. Um, the sheer stuff that you can see through, it's a little bit easier to use. I've shown you one pattern that shows you what to do with um, a kind of an unusual simplicity pattern. But remember, there's also a lot of other patterns out on the market. And if you look for these patterns that have the princess lines that go up into the shoulders, those are really easy to correct shoulder lines on. So this is maybe a good idea for the person who has to do a lot of shoulder adjustments. You can just add a little bit or take a little bit away on the shoulder line and it's really simple to fix it that way. So when you're looking for patterns for your body type, if shoulders are an issue, those princess lines are easy to do, but you just saw we can do this alteration pretty simply. So 
remind you, please share. We are giving away two wonderful patterns as a Valentine's Day present. Mariana just shared. Hello. Angie says hello. <laughs> hello, ladies. I love you guys. You're wonderful. You always make me feel good. Okay, so we have these two great patterns, so go ahead and share and let us know you shared because Facebook doesn't let us always see who everybody who's shared. So make sure that you put in the comments that you've shared. Um, and we always love to talk to you. So I always go back after these videos are all done and I try to respond to you guys and let you know I appreciate your comments. Okay, so we have some fabulous fabrics that just came in. We just got in Jewel Basin from McKenna Ryan and we've gotten in, what's the other one? I'm trying to find the name to it. This, I know this is Jewel Basin. You know, I love this with these fabric companies. They do not give me enough information sometimes on the bolts, but this is really cool. This fabric right here is worth the price of admission. You guys have been waiting patiently to see the new fabrics, and I have a wonderful one for you to see. We get to think spring. Spring. Look at this. This is so cool. There is so, there's these flowers on the bottom. There's trees up into the sky. How gorgeous is this? So, very, very beautiful. I want to see what you guys are going to make with it. Oh, when guess who it? else is watching? Who is watching today? Betsy Girls. Hi, Betsy. I hope you enjoyed the shoulder demonstration. I kind of was thinking that's why I told you to go ahead and watch today. So we have this lovely fabric from McKenna Ryan. I want to see what you guys are going to do with it. Then we have the fields of flowers. How pretty is that? This is all from um, the Jewel Basin line. And then we have this wonderful group of I, what do you think? Car, um, chrysanthemums, maybe? So pretty. I really like flowers. I love to garden, and so flowers always make me happy and make me think of spring. And so we've got some really cool stuff going on there. I think this one's more like an abstract of a bunch of flowers. Really pretty colors. These are so vibrant. I hope that they are coming across as beautiful as they look in person because they are just absolutely stunningly beautiful. So there's another one. This one's called Into the Meadow. Some. Now here we go. We were, we've backed out even a little bit more. We've gone for the abstract and now we've gone for the really painterly look here with this one and this one looks like you've got the flowers going into the sky with the blues coming through very pretty and then let's see which one is this one see i'm thinking this one has a different number or a different name let's see yep this is joel basin too maybe the other one you know what i probably just fibbed to you I think that the first group was called Into the Meadow, and this is called Jewel Basin. I apologize. I didn't mean to make that mistake, but I am new to this line. Well, I think Alice pointed that out earlier. Oh, good. <laughs> I need somebody to help me out here. So look at this, how pretty this one is. It is just so lovely. It's more of an ombre effect. These are gorgeous kind of uh, blue greens in here in a variety going from a light to a dark and it's got re these really gorgeous little fireflies on it this feels really asian to me i really like this particular group of fabrics but just in case you want another really cool scene this one has this one looks like it's I, we, I think we called it Into the Dawn because it was just so perfect for the dawn, the sun just rising in the middle of a forest. You're looking out onto the forest. And so here's the purple skies. Your trees are all down here. And you've got this beautiful sky going on. It is just stunning. And then there's like hills going on there. How pretty is that? It's just so beautiful. 
think I'm in the Smoky Mountains. Yep, you're in the Smoky Mountains with this one. I can see that. Or maybe the Rockies. So maybe the Rockies just right before dawn. So we have to include our Western folks in this one. Okay, now we've got this beautiful purple. And again, tiny little flowers in it. It's so beautiful. The colors are amazing. Jewel Basin has teals and purples and then a little bit of rust going on in one of them. I will show you that one here in a minute. This is a kind of stripe look. And it looks like somebody was very talented with a paintbrush and could make everything look like trees and flowers. It's so beautiful. Then we go to our watercolor version of all the pretty colors. You can tell this person's a quilter. They went with a big print and then littler prints and some really great blenders. Um, they really know what we quilters enjoy, but you know, some of these fabrics would make amazing clothes too. Couldn't you see a top out of this fabric? It is so pretty. So, that is a really beautiful one. And then here we have, this looks like dandelion little snowballs, but in white and blues and purples. Very, very beautiful. And this print apparently was meant to go this way. Very, very pretty. Now, here we get into that kind of dusky sky beginning of the day or at the end of the night. Very gorgeous teals and blues with a little bit of clouds going on there, I think. And then this one, boy, I really love the colors on this one. You've got your kind of burgundies and a little bit of brown in it, some creams. Very, very gorgeous. So, Last thing I'm going to take and make sure that you see before we get going here is we have three new stuff knits and they are just absolutely so pretty. One is this gorgeous black floral. Then we've got a red floral in here and a black with gray stripe and some off white in there. These colors are so pretty. They're very pure, they're very nice. They're not too grayed out. Um, I think everybody's gonna look good in these. So, I wanted you to see the new stuffs that came in. They're very, very nice. And guys, I gotta go. It's time for the shop to open. And please share our videos. You're gonna win great prizes this weekend. Have a wonderful Valentine's Day. And um, if you're a Super Bowl fan, go whatever team you like. It. <laughs> so everybody have a great weekend. We'll see you next Friday at Facebook Live.